Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another quick video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House up in Maine. Now these guys are selling, or were selling, depending on when you watch this video, a whole bunch of Elmer Keith's guns. If you don't know who Keith is, frankly, you should go buy a copy of his book, Six Guns, and read it and learn about the history of the American Revolver. Uh, Elmer Keith was instrumental in the development of the 357 Magnum cartridge, the 41 Magnum cartridge, the 44 Magnum cartridge, and really is an icon in American gun writing. Now, while they were going through his papers and his effects and his guns, one of the things that they found was this exploded single action army cylinder. And this is just a fantastically cool piece of, frankly, it's a historical artifact. It has some serious significance. So I'm gonna bring the camera back and look at this up close and tell you what it is. All right, so here's the story in a nutshell. Elmer Keith in the 1920s was basically a cowboy and wrangler up in Montana. He was uh, shooting his beloved favorite gun. Well, first off, he was out shooting anything and everything that moved, because it's just what he did. And here on the 4th of July, he was celebrating, shooting his uh, 45 Colt single action army. He had been making some really hot loads for it, because it's what he did. And uh, noticed that the first two in the cylinder made an awfully loud uh, kaboom and quite a lot of flash. And when he went to pull the trigger on the third round, he didn't do anything at all, and he pulled the gun down only to discover that he had, in fact, blown the top of the cylinder off. Uh, here, are, <laughs> here is the last cartridge that uh, was fired out of this gun. Didn't hurt himself in the process, fortunately, but uh, ruined the revolver, definitely ruined the cylinder here. He ended up writing a letter to American Rifleman asking, you know, trying to figure out exactly why this had happened and what he could do to prevent it. Uh, besides, of course, from using factory ammo, which is what he did not do. So the upshot of this was he ended up switching to 44 Special. Um, the revolvers made in 44 Special had significantly thicker case walls that could withstand much higher pressure and uh, give him a couple decades. And presto, after badgering the firearms industry long enough, the result is the 44 Magnum cartridge, which is almost entirely due to Elmer Keith's patronage and, and constant experiments and advocacy. So this is just a fantastic piece of firearms history. This is, in fact, the accident that led over time to the 44 Magnum. Uh, so what can we learn from this thing? I think there are a couple things. First off, nobody starts out perfect. When Elmer Keith did this, frankly, he made a whole bunch of what we would consider today to be ridiculously novice mistakes. He was trying to hot rod 45 Colt. He was using a single action army, which is well known today, largely thanks to Elmer Keith, to really not be strong enough. The cylinder walls aren't strong enough to run really hot loads of 45 Colt in a single action army. Uh, in order to, to do his hot loads, he was trying to find particularly heavy bullets. He ran out of, of weights that he was happy with uh, in the standard .454 diameter bullets designed for 45 Colt. So what he switched up to was bullets designed for the 4570. They're still 45, but 4570 is a .458 bullet. It's significantly larger in diameter, and that's definitely a contributing factor as to why this cylinder exploded on him. The bullets were too big, it spiked pressure. And he didn't know that at the time. Um, he wrote an, uh, a letter to the American Rifleman magazine about this incident happening. And one of the things he mentions is that he wasn't sure why it had exploded, except maybe large bullets had something to do with it, and inquired where he might find the tools to properly size uh, larger bullets down to 454. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, firearms novices out there, you can take heart in the fact that even someone as iconic and legendary as Elmer Keith started out making just plain old rookie mistakes, just like anyone else. And, uh, you know, if you take the right attitude and the right know-how and you're willing to, to put in the work, you can take something like that and turn it into a fantastic new development like the 44 Magnum cartridge. Thanks for watching.